All right, guys, how's it going? Here with Greg Wood. Um, and uh, we're in the outdoor dojo in the mountains again. It's a lovely day for jiu-jitsu on, uh, on the deck here. And uh, just want to uh, kind of review a little bit here what we were doing the other day in terms of guard passing. Uh, maybe I'll ask Greg if he's uh, interested in also kind of sharing something else that he's, he's working on or doing with us either from the guard or from the back. Um, so let's just sort of take a few minutes here, uh, review that pass that we were working on a little bit last week, and then use that as to get into some back situations. Okay, so if we're here, guys, all right, so if, if Jay, if you're great. I'm just going to be a little more mad. Tilt me a little bit. All right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's good to have a professional cameraman here. Um, Again, guys, like we, were, we started to work on a little bit last week, we can do this uh, type of position here anytime that uh, either I'm on my knees or standing up. It doesn't really matter. For me, I, I like to pass standing. Um, so I like to use this especially when someone maybe makes like a De La Hiva hook on me, yeah, like that. Um, or simply in here, once if they're sitting up, I put them flat. Like, so that could be, again, like we usually do scooping the feet up here, like kind of Marcelo style, or like I like to do stepping on somebody to flatten them, and then entering into this spot right here, okay? So what I'm looking for here on this first piece of this move is really just kind of this, this connection of my shin against that sort of crook of my partner's knee bend, okay? And I'm always like any other De La Hiva situation unless I'm running away or kicking out. I'm always trying to kind of keep that knee on an angle so once I kill the hook here, it's very hard for Greg to kind of replace the hook, right? He really has to kind of make an angle with his body if he wants to get sort of control of that line exactly all right so we're just going to enter from that standing position it doesn't matter how we got here maybe i put greg on his back or maybe he started the pull guard on me and i'm going to use shin against that inside of the knee like we did last time okay so that's step one i'm going to enter that shin once i enter that shin all i'm looking to do is i'm looking to dive under my partner's leg on that other side all right and the way that I'll achieve that a lot of times is by letting them, like we talked about last time, push me backwards a little bit with this. Exactly, and stretch me, okay? If I feel Greg push me, that's a perfect opportunity here as he pushes either my thigh or my hip, okay? Here, just to simply start to look for that space, right? To just fall onto that shoulder, literally just to fall right to my side here, okay? Again, you guys notice that I'm keeping this knee articulated toward the sky here, okay? I don't want to be too low here so Greg can kind of break that connection or fumble his leg inside. Now he's on top of me. That could be a bad day for me. So I really want to keep the angle of that knee up, right? And once we fall, guys, all I'm going to do is just start to simply give this hip a big hug, all right? I want to get as close to my partner's butt as I can with my hip. So I can always scoot in and adjust a little bit and just hug them really tight, okay? So, again, this works really well off of this idea of someone kind of pushing me or trying to kind of off balance me with that leg. But if my partner's not active with this hook, right, that, it, that could be good too. I could literally kind of play this game where if my partner makes a hook here, oh, maybe I back out of it and, and wait for that leg to come up. Or maybe I simply try to push this leg down and get Greg to bring it back up, right? I kind of just want to find that space to be able to dive right under it, okay? Knee is pointing up to the sky. Step number two here, once we have that hug really tight, we have our hip right against our partner's butt, all right? All we're gonna do is take that right side, and we're literally just gonna take that right side, take that right hand, and we're gonna just try to find that space under our partner's leg, under the back of their knee here. Sometimes I'll back up a little bit, just to make a little space here, to swim that arm around my, oh, sorry, Greg, around my partner's leg. I honestly wanna, I kinda wanna let you do it, because this feels a little like a split. Like a split, yeah, you could definitely be pushing out here, guys, and creating some pressure, which, I'm sorry if I'm doing that. I'm not no. trying to. But yeah. Greg's exactly right. You could sort of make that a little bit uncomfortable for your partner there. And when you swim it, aware of it, I'm almost okay bringing my leg up. You know, forget it. Of course, what's going to happen next. I'm okay bringing my leg yeah. up because it's not it's tension. Because it's not that push pull. Right. Exactly. You know, that stretch. Right. So we're here, guys. Okay. I've fallen. And now, and I can't get up. We're here. Okay. I've fallen. And I'm going to go ahead and swim that top arm, that right hand, that right side under my partner's knee. And then just make that fart noise with my armpit nice and tight here. Okay, again, knee is still kind of engaged here. I want to keep that tension, that connection on the back of my partner's knee. All right. Now we're just going to use elbow here on that last step there. And kind of that third part here. Use our elbow first. Use our knee right on the ground. Okay. And as I'm getting up onto that elbow, I'm just simply going to reach for that lapel here. And it doesn't really matter what I grab. Okay. 
But I, I, if the lapel is there and I'm, this is a knee situation, I'm going to go ahead and just try to control that lapel and kind of pull that elbow in close to bring Greg as close to me as possible and make my sit-up easier. Okay, so I'm kind of using my partner to help kind of pull myself up like a rope there. And now I'm in that really good leg drag position where I can start just to staple that knee to the floor, pull that arm in nice and tight. Okay, guys, remember that detail we always talk about where I'm kind of trying to touch that elbow right to my chest. Okay, and then I'm literally just kind of pinning Greg nice and tight. Some people prefer, depending on the body type, to be up on their foot here. I prefer to stay on my knees with active toes so I can drive that forward pressure. Okay, and now we can start to either look for our underhook here and pass, look for our overhook and pass, look to the back, right? and we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so one more time, guys. Again, three parts to this. Really, the key here is I'm just looking for that connection. I can find that a million different ways. Maybe my partner pulled guard. Maybe I put them flat. We're getting into a De La Hiva situation. I'm not even going to worry about anything other than keeping that knee out just to kill the hook. All right. And then maybe I crowd my partner a little bit, get them to push me backwards a little bit. Maybe I push down and get Greg to pull back up. All right. And I fall. Once we fall, I'm just going to make sure that our knee is tilted up and that we're scooting our hip in so we can give my partner's hip a really big hug here. Okay. Arm goes around to the other side. And I'm gonna make that grip, but first I'm gonna get up. I don't just wanna reach here. I wanna to start to get closer to Greg first with that elbow. Now I can pull myself up, staple, okay? And again, you guys can see here, just scooch from me a little bit right this back. Yeah, perfect. All right, you guys can see how knees are on the ground. I'm pulling everything in, closing off that space. And then again, this is the, the piece of the pass that's really sort of slow and methodical and, and, and pressure based instead of fast and dynamic and diving. Okay, I'm staying super tight, super heavy here, and then I'm just finding my spot here to start to get in a good side control or to force the back a little bit low. Okay, last time through, so we're here again. I could do this for my knees, like we talked about last time, off of Greg's position from that double unders. Okay, but for now, I'm on my feet. It doesn't really matter, the, 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 the sequence is going to be exactly the same. My partner's on their back, my crook of that knee for my partner, okay, and my knee sort of are in a line there, okay. I'm just going to get any kind of reaction here I can or wait until my partner's leg is a little high. Just lower my level down and fall, okay. Knee points up. Make sure that if I land too far away here, that I just use my partner to hit in a little bit and take my time and get really tight, okay. Now I'm ready to go. I swim inside, all right, I sit up on my elbow, like I'm going to start to do technical stand-up, foot can find the floor here now, lifting my hip, into my knee, drive down, staple, and then we find whatever we can here. If my partner's arm is really tight or if they're starting to push me, it's probably going to be the outside of their body, okay, if there's space under here, I can win that underhook battle, I like that better. I'm going to force the back. It's easier to get lower exactly and force the turtle. Okay? So that, that's the first part of the move, guys. All right? If you're – obviously, we're not watching this live with anybody um, practicing with us. So if you guys want to pause the video at this point, we'll get some reps in on that. Make sure that you guys feel comfortable with that sequence. All right? We can then start to initiate the second part. Do you have anything, Greg, you want to add to that? Um, or any way that you kind of want to get us to the same position before we – no, just sort of, I mean, what it feels like for the other guy, right? right? I wouldn't add anything to the pass at this point, but like what I feel on the bottom, um, I mean, it just, it does feel really systematic. When he dives under my leg, like I said, I feel, you know, that's one, that's a really good control over somebody to have somebody split, 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 you know, as much as they, as they can be. That's one way to put tension on the front so you can move the whole person. And I want to relieve that tension, so I want to bring it over your head. So like when you get, I forget all about leg drag in that moment uh, because, I'm happy not to have that tension on my hips. When you get past, especially when you stay for the legs, there's nowhere for me to go. It's yeah, that, 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 I love the leg drag. I love it. I love passing that way, but I also like, I sort of love the control exactly that comes with that idea of being able to pin the hip, which is, you know, again, that's sort of my whole, whole idea when I'm passing guard, period. But it's a, it's a very strong way to do that because you're, you're really implementing this sort of idea of body weight and hip control at the same time, which is, which is, which is really good. Um, okay, guys, good. So if you have a, uh, if you want, or if you have a minute, to drill this, go ahead and pause the video and do that. And uh, Greg and I will pretend that we're coming back here after doing a wonderful edit in the video. And welcome back, guys. Okay. So, this is part of the movie. hey, all right. Hey.
So uh, second thing we're going to look at today, and then I'm going to, again, just turn it over to Greg uh, to maybe add a couple things that he likes from the back there. Uh, if he wants to show us maybe like a finish or some other thing he likes to do from back control. Um, but we're going to draw up the assumption here that a lot of times, especially in a competition setting, like, like we were talking about with Jay last week um, when we were doing this live, a lot of times no, the, your opponent or, or your partner won't want you to get on top of them. They won't, you, they won't want you to achieve side control um, because they'll, they'll score points, right? If, if, if I come up on top from that pass position into a side control, I'm going to solidify my pass points. Um, and if I'm in a tournament, that could be – bad news if I'm the one getting passed, right? So a lot of times in, in sort of uh, response to my technique, in, in response to my pass, what's going to happen is my partner is going to go to the turtle. They're going to go automatically. They're going to voluntarily go to the turtle on their terms because they don't want me to flatten them out and score points from guard pass, okay? Um, sometimes I'll have to force the back. I'll have to get low and usually use my chest like a wedge or, or create pressure with my shoulder to get them to force them to turtle so I can put my hook in. But we're going to look at this today as if, my partner just simply doesn't want me to score those points for the pass. And in response to me passing and starting to flatten them out, they, they voluntarily start to, to bridge onto that shoulder and, and, and accept the turtle on their turn so they can defend the hook or whatever else, okay? When they do that, guys, there's a really easy, easy way to put that bottom hook in. It's literally just at that same moment as my partner tends to to their shoulder. And that's what I'm going to show you guys. This is for me. Um, at least if I want to attack the, the choke side of the back, the dominant side of the back, that's going to be that's going to be the way to do it. Yeah, so everything's going to be the same, guys. We got into that pass position. I'm in my leg drag, okay? And for me, again, I like to always try to find that underhook if I can. Sometimes I won't be able to get it. Greg's just too good, and I'll just have to use the, the, the control of the head. But if I can find, if I can swim or pummel for this underhook here and get some kind of control on the collar, that's going to allow me to open up my partner's shoulder better, and I'm going to like that. So as I start to come around and pass here, Greg feels me coming exactly. You guys see he drives up onto that shoulder, okay? So at that moment where I'm starting to get my chest in position for side control, Greg's already looking away and driving onto the shoulder. As he does that, guys, all I'm going to do, if you guys look at my position relative to Greg's back here, I'm right on that line of his shoulder. So all I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to post my foot here, my right foot, and I'm going to slide my body down a little bit kind of toward Greg's hips, almost like I'm trying to slide myself underneath the space that he creates, okay? That's going to make it a lot easier, especially if I don't have long legs, to slip that hook into just the right spot. So if we're here and Greg's putting a turtle, so I control this collar, I slide down and in, and now it's easy to slide my bottom hook, if you guys can see my foot here, right in here, and use my foot on the, on the mat here, or on Greg, but I prefer the mat, just simply kind of slide myself back and under my partner, and collect them here, okay? And as I do that again, I'm collecting with that sort of over-under position. I'm already in the over-under in the sense of my, my arm off of that leg drag, my control of the collar was that bottom hand of my partner's seat belt, right? And the top arm here is controlling the back of the lapel already, so it's literally just an easy jump to either collect my hands or collect the collar, okay? I don't know what you want, but you guys see that puts me in that position where I'm right behind my partner, and, and I can pretend he's that, that pirate and then I'm that parrot on his shoulder, okay? Like repeating everything he says. So there's always, whether it's a pirate, there's always a parrot on the shoulder. That's what we always do in the kids class, okay? So it's whatever Greg says, I just repeat. Uh, I'm right on his shoulder with my head. Okay? And then I can start to adjust my position here with the hook. Or with the, or with his, okay? okay? So let's look at that one more time, guys. Again, this, this is a transition that requires some drilling. So if you're practicing this with someone at home, partner on the bottom, the partner getting past, okay? make sure that you turtle slowly at first for your partner. You really get that weight on the shoulder so your partner can kind of find the timing to slide in with that hook. Okay? As you get better at it, obviously that's going to happen very fast in the, in the transition. Okay? But we're, Greg and I are kind of doing it slow right now just so you guys can kind of see what it looks like over here. I'm starting to find that underhook. Controlling the collar, if you guys look where my hands are, right? they're already essentially in a seatbelt position before I even – Take his back, okay? I start to go under. Greg doesn't want me to pass. He doesn't want to accept the pass. So I slide my body low. I find my hook. Control the hook here, okay? And then we just pinch and scoot and collect, okay? And once I'm in this position here, my chin goes right to my partner's shoulder. And now I'm on that choke side here. And I can continue to improve my position. So collect what I want and isolate, okay? And that will put us in, in the choke.
Okay, so it won't last time on that. And then we're just gonna work from the back a little bit here. And I'm gonna, like I said, turn over to Greg as well. And we'll go through a couple possibilities here, a couple of the sequence. So here, all right guys, again, came up in my leg drag. I'm getting ready to pass. I find the underhook, control that back of that collar, staying low, forcing the turtle. My partner goes, okay. I got the hook, I collect, and I sink nice and low. Head is right there, chin is right on my partner's shoulder. And for me, I'm already feeding that collar in to start my choke attacks or my bow and arrow uh, and whatever I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys one finish from there, but first I want to I want to turn that over to Greg um, because he's going to keep it silent and helpful. So we're going to let him show us something from the back there from that choke control, uh, maybe some choke or whatever you want sure. to do. And yeah, then, yeah. And then I'll come back and, and I'll, I can add a finish as well. Okay. If I uh... Let's say I have that one, that one hook and we, we just landed here where Brad had, had us landed. And this was the hand, let's see, this was the hand that was in the knee. Yeah, and we have this opportunity to set up kind of a collar choke. When we're on the, the strong side or the choke side here with this arm on the bottom, I always like, you know, I, I, I love this detail. It did change everything uh, kind of a while ago when I learned it, but to flip this collar over, it really does make this grip better. The other thing that, um, Last time we were with Peter Sauer, he was talking about was, was not grabbing with four fingers because it actually causes a strain on your wrist. He grabs with two fingers. So he actually grabs with two, and then you can see these two, my pinky and ring finger are actually tucked in. That's something I'm trying to remember to do. It's actually new information to me. But the, it, it's, it's right. When I have the two fingers, it doesn't hurt my wrist to be applying pressure. So having handed this off to this hand and getting my grip on the bottom of L, you'll find on the strong side, on this choke side here, that it's hard to it's hard to finish a choke here because there's a lot of friction in my elbow with the ground. And one way to solve that problem, whether I had two hooks or whether I had the one hook, is to take this hook out and use it um, as a pendulum to sit myself up. I'm going to kick myself down so that I'm up on my elbow. Once I'm on my elbow, I, this, is, this is a much easier choke to finish. I can do it just with the lapels if you think of the lapels. But if I use my shoulder, so the difference, cool. difference right, is that shoulder on the back of Brad's head. So, you know, we're in a very typical place doing a very fundamental choke, but if, if there's a couple of details you can get, that's just the minute. So if these two fingers are going in, get it too. I don't bother because it'll hurt my the pinky side of my wrist. I'll get a hold of my lapels. But you'll find this is hard to finish because my elbow's on the floor. I can't do quite what I want to without getting my head way out of the picture. So I don't really want to do that. If you're choking hand, this hand is pretty deep. We don't we don't yank the person's throat. That's not what I'm doing to grab when I sit up because I'm leaving enough space like that. Yeah, I can just when you draw that, when you just literally just find that angle, like bring your shoulder back, or your elbow back. That is super tight. Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine a student doing that too fast, another student to whack them in the throat. <laughs> so make sure you're not doing that. Once I'm on my elbow, now now I'm going to put my shoulder on the back of this head. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it isn't about yeah. my hand like my hand strength or my or my pull on the material. It's about my shoulder adding the pressure to the back of this. So, so you're literally just that. putting your head and shoulder down as you, as you get to solidify that grip once you sit up. Huh? Yeah, since you didn't see it, I, I, I see it came with yeah, the elbow. That's, and it's wow. that's really cool. I've never seen that before. That's on super tight. It's, on, uh, it's on DVD mats. Uh, if I think of it, I'll, t I'll tell you. That's all. Real good. Anyway. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Great, thanks, man. That's yeah. awesome. I'll learn something. I'm gonna come back and watch it again too. Um, so here, come on in and let's. And let's so guys, okay. So for the for the more senior guys that are watching this, you, you guys have probably seen me and uh, experienced me doing this this finish a lot. This is kind of how I like to finish from the back side or from the choke side um, when I'm on the back, all right? And it's it's for me the easiest way to go because I I sort of anticipate what my partner's reaction to trying to choke up is going to be. Um, so before we go a little bit. So if we're in that same spot, guys, right? Like I'm, I'm going to be on my shoulder in a second. Maybe show you guys how we're going to kind of conceptualize this here. Um, I know that once I put that hand in the collar, that Greg's going to fight for that real estate. I, I know he is. Okay. And and almost anybody that does jujitsu for longer than a couple months knows how to escape the back in this most basic way, which we all learn, and it's like sort of in our DNA from from the time we start jujitsu, which is always when I'm falling to the side here, when I'm landing on the side here to start attacking, Greg's going to protect his neck, and he's going to do what? I'm going to either try to switch sides so I can go shoulders to the mat or while protecting my 
neck, I'm either gonna clear my head. Yeah, okay, you could do that too for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of times what, what people do more on a, at a more basic level here is they'll just put their back on the floor, right? They'll start turning away, just go ahead and put your back on the mat. Oh. The neck. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So as I go for the choke, my partner's already trying to put their back on the mat and move their hip away from me. So that, you know, again, they're starting their escape as I'm starting my attack, right? And this is the game, whoever's got the better maybe bridge or control, or that would take that leg you showed us, it was awesome. Okay. The reality is here, I start going for the choke, right? Protects his neck. Then he starts slowly. Yeah, exactly. He's getting his head to the mat. He's trying to go ahead to move it up with me. Perfect. And now we're in this scramble as he moves in such a way of who can sort of win that, that top position, right? Who uh, can get their hips higher. Okay. So as my partner starts to clear, right, that control and put their back on the floor, guys, all I'm going to simply do is let them clear my hook, okay, and use my elbow, all right, and use my knee to get up. Really, really simple setup for the bow and arrow, which for me is my favorite way of playing for, okay. So for here, let's go one step at a time, all right. I know my partner is going to protect their neck, okay, right, and exactly, right, it's going to, even that basic joke is going to be hard because my partner's going to be on that, all right. Greg's already starting, if you guys can see my hook here, which you can, good, okay. He's already starting to turn and start to clear my hook. So I let him do that, and at the same time, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this leg over the top and kind of high-five the other side, okay? So I put that original hook on the floor once he starts to put his weight on it. And now as I feel Greg starting to go over that hook, I'm going to let him do it. Well, good. Thank you, Greg. Okay. And now I'm just going to sit up on my elbow here, just like he did for the pass, okay? And now I'm just going to use that leg, use that knee that Greg just slid over, okay, to, to just drive my knee onto the floor and get up. I just literally follow him, guys, okay? So without Greg for a second, when we're here, okay, as soon as my partner starts to put their back on the floor, I just let them slide over that hook, okay, bring this one over the top, okay? And then how we're getting up here is really simple. It's just, look, elbow, you just slid right here, okay? So I just elbow, knee, and step, okay? And when we stand up, just make sure that your that line of your knee or your thigh is kind of over by your partner's ear. So you're almost in, not almost, you are in essentially like a triple attack position, right? And then we're just gonna finish the choke. So my partner starts to defend his neck. He starts to go over, good. As he does that, I just sit up with him. Keep my chest behind his back. Line my knee up, guys. And now you guys see where we are. We're in triple attack. Maybe I can attack his arm. Maybe I can reset his back if I need to. Okay, but for now, all we're going to do is this. Three steps, okay? Step one, I'm just going to sit my partner up. Okay, because I have control of their head. Step two, I'm just going to rip that bottom arm out. Okay? And I'm going to reach for the pants. All right? A grip will do. Ideally, if my partner, the, the distance isn't too great, I'll reach under my partner's leg, though. That's going to be a much stronger finishing grip, and I won't have to rely on the feet. Okay? And step number three, and this is, again, for me, the, the game changer, the big detail here is that I'm going to step up before I sit down, okay? If I just sit down right now and try to, try to choke Greg, my leg is going to get caught underneath him. And then I'm going to really struggle to adjust my leg and get it out of my own way, okay? So what, what I want you guys to do is step up and just sit on your butt. And then you clear your partner's shoulder here, okay? I'm going to try to do my best to keep Greg on his shoulder. Just going to put you down on the side, okay? Here. And now I'm in a really strong finishing position. Elbow stays tight. I stretch. Okay. And that for me is, is literally the most high percentage move that I have, I think, in my, in my back game, in my back system, is, is, is going to that bow and arrow. I anticipate what my partner's going to do. I know Greg's going to bail on me. I know he knows how to defend his back. He knows how to defend his neck. So we're here. I let him go. I feel him go. I just look as he clears my leg. Beautiful. I just can't follow him. Step one, I just sit him up a little bit. Step two, I reach under. If I can't do that, I'll grab the pants. And step three, I just sit up and fall. Okay, and now I'm ready. If Greg defends his neck with that hand too, it's perfect because now I have my leg over the shoulder to peel that out of the way and finish my attack. Okay? Worst place today. Yeah, not good, all right? Unless you're Dan Greco. He's really just defending that position. <laughs> Shout out, Dan Greco. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's a very tough spot to be in, okay? especially if the person choking you has that elbow and uh, it's tight. It's very hard to get under that elbow. All right, to so give you your arm, even if you do, though, right? Yeah, yeah, like this. It's sad. Yeah, you do. That's sorry, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add from that position? Or? No, no, that's yeah. beautiful. We'll I haven't, I haven't stepped all the way up. I've done. Uh, I've entered the position. Um, 
you know, when you were in the triple attack, I'll, I'll open this way and fall, fall yeah. here. But I, I, I haven't thought to just like get up if I'm not doing the, you know, you could do the knee behind the head thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. For that, that, that extra terrible. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, drop, drive your knee right into like the cervical spine. Yeah, yeah, awful. awful. Uh, that's the only time I've seen people get up. Yeah. I like this. So, yeah. yeah. So, cool. All right, guys, well, there's a couple things again. Nothing probably for the guys that are watching this, uh, Soka Peaks, nothing really probably earth shattering there. So, on my end, you guys know I played that game a lot. I keep stuff going in a lot. Um, but man, I just got one little thing that Greg shared. That's awesome. I'm going to go back and watch this after myself because uh, that's a little bit detail about the finish there and about getting the leg as soon as your elbow back and using your, your head and your shoulder down. I like that. I'll get you the guy's name. Yeah. I, I do want to give you the source. Cool. Um, it was a good day and a first hand attack. His name is a good day. Can you Okay. Yeah, his name escapes me, and maybe you can put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, big announcement coming soon. We'll be uh, getting some plans together for hopefully getting some, some stuff started again in person uh, in about a week, week and a half. So more, more on that to come. We're working hard on it. And I've, I've heard from a bunch of you guys on, uh, you know, when are we opening and what are we doing. Um, and we're working on it. So I'll let you, let you guys know. And uh, thanks again for, for checking us, us out here. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.